is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents with God's Church of Love Online, Tuesdays and Saturdays, and we are now reading Colossians chapter 3. If ye then be in risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, hmm, evil concupiscence and covetousness, which is idolatry. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience in the which ye also walked sometimes when ye lived in them. But now ye put off all, excuse me, but now ye also put off all these, all these, all these, anger, <clears throat> wrath, ah, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. So for those of you Christians who think you could cuss like a sailor, smoke like a chimney, and act like a fool, this says right here, but now ye also put off all these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Spit it out, but don't speak it out. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision, nah, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond, nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which you also are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. That means you got to read the word, y'all. Teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord, and whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Now, we're going to drop down verse 23. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men, knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done. And there is no respect of person, no favorites. Okay, now, one of the things I want to say to you before I expound on the word is be encouraged, you guys. God knows that you're trying. God already knows you're not going to get it all right. But he honors an honest effort. He honors truthfulness. We all fall short of the glory of God. And we all need to admit it. There are times when I feel selfish and I don't want to think of someone else. I want to think of me first. And I have to honestly admit that part of my flesh to God. That's part of me pulling my flesh into subjection and mortifying the deeds of my flesh. Because 
There are times that I wouldn't do some of the things I did if I leaned to my own understanding and were guided and controlled by my own emotions and whims. So part of our growing up and becoming more and more holy, more and more loving is mortifying the deeds of our flesh and whatever we do in word and deed make the motivation be founded on love and the other person's well-being, the other person's benefit. See, we live in a society where it's every tub sits on its own bottom. I got mine, now you go get yours. You know, um, this is my thing. You stay out of my business, I'll stay out of your business. You do you, I do me. But see, we are one in the body of Christ. And when I do me, it affects you. When you do you, it affects me. No matter what it is, good and bad. So whatever we do in word or deed, we affect each other's lives. And I want to tell you this, you guys. When we go through this life, even the people that are on our jobs, even those that get on our last nerves that seem to do it on purpose, even those that seem to be uh, working against us in whatever way possible, we have to ask God to fill our hearts with a love and a compassion, fill our minds and our spirits with an insight so we can see past the fault and see that person's need. And you'll be surprised how meeting a need can change a person's whole attitude towards you because you're not addressing how they're treating you. You're addressing what God is showing you behind the scenes. There may be times when God may tell you, no, don't give them lip like they're giving you lip. Keep your silence and I'll tell you when to address them and how. And one day you may be working and you see their countenance and God says now, and you walk over them under the authority and the anointing of God and his love. And you put your hand on their shoulder, look them in the eye and say, God told me that you're struggling. Would you like me to pray for you? Why are you talking about blowing them away? They'd be like, wait, 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 huh? been at you like white on rice and you're going to sit up here and, and, and you really care. Goodness. You know, the Bible says when your enemy, the, the way to, to, to drive him crazy, it's like pouring hot coals of, of hot fiery coals on their head. When you treat them, they're evil and you return it with love. When you return their meanness with kindness. When you return their contempt with compassion. They don't know what to do with that. It, it, it boggles the mind. They're, they're lost. <laughs> they don't know what to do. Um, so that's why Jesus tries to share with you how he dealt with people. What he did. Speaking up, speaking the truth. Yeah, that's cool. Jesus did that. But always make sure your motive is right. There are times when I'm not sure about my motive. If I'm not sure, I keep my mouth shut. Because once you let that train go, it can become a runaway train. You have no idea where it's going to crash. It will crash. So you have to keep your natural tendencies under constant scrutiny of the Holy Spirit so that you don't allow you to run wild. Hmm. Yeah. Flesh running wild. You don't need that. Not when you're representing Christ. A lot of us as Christians forget that we represent him. We represent love. You hear me? Everything you do. Even the thoughts you have. Sometimes I'm at church 
and I have these thoughts toward people. And I'm thinking, hmm, Lord, I'm not thinking nice things today. Would you fill my love tank in the name of Jesus? I don't know what's going on. Let me know if I'm feeling resentful and I don't get it. Let me know if I have something against that person that I haven't admitted to myself. Sometimes God will point out something in you you don't realize is there. You don't see, and he knows you're not aware of it. He's not holding it against you, but he knows it will work against you. Mm -hmm. So he'll tell you for your own good. You see what I'm saying? Okay. Anyway, that's a quick word, but... Constantly examine yourself. Constantly reach for God's stars, not just for the stars. Reach for the stars of God. Reach for higher ground. Reach for the higher way of dealing with things. Go the highway, not the low way. Go his way, not your way. You hear what I'm saying? In love, in compassion and forgiveness, the way you treat people, the way you treat people who mistreat you. Now, that does not mean be a doormat. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. God did not call you to be anybody's little sucker. No. He called you to be children of the Most High King. Mm -hmm. Listen, you guys. Just ask God to fill your heart with more and more love for people, for God, and for yourself. And you'll start to see things shifting how you interact. You see what I'm saying? All right. So I hope that encourages you. And God bless you.